Hey guys, Adam here with AmericanMuscle.com and today we're taking a closer look at and installing the SR Performance Cold Air Intake for the 11 and newer 5.7 liter Hemi equipped Challengers. You should be checking this out if you're looking for the most budget friendly cold air intake in the category, something to keep that cost down while still giving you an upgrade over your factory air box. This comes with a very simple kit, not any of the bells and whistles you'd get from a $400 plus dollar premium option, but you're still getting a really decent package here. The big star of the show is gonna be your filter. This is a big upgrade over your factory paper element filter. While it is a smaller conical filter than some of the ones in the category, it does have a washable and reusable quality to it. That's great for the guys not looking to have to pick up a new filter to replace their factory paper element one every time routine maintenance comes around. Pop this off, wash it, re-oil it, and throw it right back in. It is an oiled filter. Now in the category, there are oiled and there are dry filters. Now they're within a 1% difference of performance between each other, but I will say oiled filters are typically known to be able to filter out a little bit more of the dirt, dust, and particles that you don't want in getting into your engine bay than a dry filter. But dry filters on the other hand are typically a better option for guys in dry weather climates seeing a lot more air pollution because oiled filters do get clogged up a little bit faster than dry. So it just requires a little bit more maintenance. When you pop it off, clean it up, you'll just re-oil it. It's as simple as that. It is a non-woven synthetic filter here with a diamond wire mesh outer layer, making sure that it's trapping out some of those particles. This does come with that polished aluminum top. It does come with a polished aluminum intake tubing as well. This is about as simple as it gets, but it does not have any kinks. It is a completely unrestricted tubing. As you can see, straight through like a straight pipe kind of exhaust here, it, no need to say mandrel bends because there is no bends to it. It's a straight pipe. This will connect to the elbow going to your throttle body, and then the other end will have another coupler connecting to your filter. This does have a welded on nipple or hose fitting on the end here, so no need to install a separate fitting to connect to your new breather hose. That is gonna be located here, replacing your factory one, and I'll talk about that a little bit later on when we get to installing it. Your heat shield is another billet aluminum black powder coated heat shield. Black powder coating gives it a little bit more of a tougher look under the hood, blends it in a little bit more, and it is very durable. It's pre-bent, everything's taken care of for you, no need to make any modifications to it. The only thing that we will do is install our weather stripping. The weather stripping is gonna seal that heat shield up under the hood and closing that filter, making sure it's trapping out all of the excess engine heat and focusing all its attention on the cold air. That's gonna be a huge plus here. Now again, keep in mind, this system comes in right around 100 bucks. It is the most affordable option in the category, which means that it does not have a completely closed air box. It doesn't have the bells and whistles, like I said earlier, but it is very affordable. With that said, the install is gonna get one out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter here. It's one of the easiest things you can do under the hood. With that said, what do you say we get started? Tools used in this install include an impact gun, a ratchet, six, eight, 16 and 17 millimeter deep sockets and a 15 millimeter wrench. All right, step number one for the uninstall, of course, just pop off your engine cover. Now, of course, we're working the 5.7. This may be a little bit different for the guys out there with a 6.1, but shouldn't vary too much. Just pop off that engine cover and just set it aside. Next up, we're gonna do our sensor right on the side of the tubing that connects to the throttle body. It's really just a pinch and disconnect. From there, you actually wanna remove the fitting for the sensor itself, which you're just gonna twist and pull straight back on. This is extremely sensitive, so set this aside and just make sure it's out of the way of any danger. Next up here, grab an eight millimeter socket or a flathead screwdriver, and we're just gonna loosen up the clamp holding the intake tubing to the throttle body. From there, you should be able to just twist it up, pull this back. Before we can remove this, we have one more bolt to remove as well as a hose, and then the whole thing will come off in one piece. All right, next step is the bolt holding the factory heat shield to the front support. That's also an eight millimeter. Just loosen that up and take that out. And here we're gonna disconnect the hose, the breather line on this end. Just gonna wiggle it back and forth and pull it straight back. At this point, we should be able to disconnect this from the throttle body and pull it all up in one piece. All right, this will pull straight up, pull out of the throttle body. You can lift up on this end here. And we're just gonna set all this aside. Now this bracket was used to hold on that factory intake at the extension portion. So we're just gonna go ahead and remove it because we're not gonna need it for our aftermarket intake. So I'm gonna take a 16 millimeter socket and just remove this bolt. At this point, you can grab a 15 millimeter wrench to hold the inside bolt. Grab your 16 socket again and just pop off the nut on the outside.
Right? This way the bracket's out of the way, but there isn't an open hole there. You can just thread the bolt back in there and tighten up that nut. Well guys, we finally got our factory airbox off of our 13.57 you see behind me, sitting next to our SR Performance. And I know I gave you all the details of the new cold air intake kit, but I wanted to show you a side-by-side -side comparison just to give you a closer idea as to what's particularly changing. Your factory intake tubing is pretty kinked. As you can see, it has that flexible middle, which can cause a pretty decent amount of air turbulence. Air turbulence is going to translate to robbed power. It's not gonna provide you with as much power as it could with a straight tubing with no kinks and no air restrictions. That's gonna be a huge replacement here. This is a larger diameter pulling in a lot more cold air and it's not gonna restrict any of that airflow, streamlining it to your throttle body. The other thing I wanted to mention here is that factory air box trapping in that flat paper element filter. While this does do a decent job locking out excess engine heat, it's not gonna maximize the space to pull in more cold air and invite more cold air in. It does go straight down into the inlet underneath, but it's not very open for the air coming through the grill. That's not gonna be the case here with your heat shield. It's gonna be a little bit more inviting of that cold air while also blocking out some of that engine heat. So a big upgrade there as well. We also have a velocity stack we're gonna to attach to our filter and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. For now, we're gonna transfer our mass airflow sensor into the rubber grommet on our elbow. We're also gonna assemble a few couplers on the ends of the tubing. And then from there, we'll talk about our heat shield. Step number one with assembling everything is to grab your factory mass airflow sensor and insert it into the rubber grommet on the elbow that'll connect to your throttle body. If this grommet isn't already installed right out of the box, make sure you grab it from the kit and pre-install that before you get started on your mass airflow sensor. From here, insert your mass airflow sensor while holding the grommet from the inside as well. You're gonna be twisting and pushing this through until it's in. Seat that right down to the O-ring and make sure it's facing the front toward your throttle body. Once that's secured in place, we can start moving on to attaching our couplers to our tubing. You wanna grab the tubing and the elbow. You do have the option to install your elbow to the throttle body first and then the tubing in the vehicle. I actually like to do it on the table here though. Make sure you have a clamp over the end here. You can actually just slide it right onto the tubing itself and then connect the elbow and the tubing. You wanna make sure that the hose fitting and the coupler are facing the same way. Slide that clamp into position, grab an eight millimeter socket or a flathead screwdriver and tighten it down. Now for the other end going into the throttle body, connect that rubber adapter to the inside. It's gonna help it take shape and have a leak free seal on the throttle body. This end is also going to receive one of those clamps, but we're gonna loosely install it now. On the opposite end, you're gonna have another coupler going into your filter. So before you install that, have another clamp on deck, slide that into place, and then your coupler. You wanna make sure that it's only about halfway in. You don't wanna have it too far in so that you don't have enough room for the filter to attach. Once you have this in place, again, grab your socket or your flathead and tighten it down. On that other end, again, is going to be another clamp, but we're gonna loosely install that for now. The next step here is gonna be with your heat shield. Now there are two strips of weather stripping. There's a smaller one and a longer one. The longer one is gonna go right across the top here. The smaller one across the bottom and this curve here. I'm gonna start at the top just feed that across. They'll snap right into place. At this point, you can take the shorter weather stripping and attach it to the side here, where all these curves are on the heat shield. Now what do you say we drop this into place? All right, first step under the hood is to grab the adapter that's gonna go into the rubber grommet on the inside of your wheel well. I'm just gonna push that down into place. Grab your heat shield and drop that in next. I'm gonna drop it in from the inside here, connecting that to the factory mounting location and the bracket down low to that grommet we just installed. Take the 17 millimeter bolt provided in the kit and thread it onto that grommet. I'm gonna thread it down all the way by hand just to make life a little easier. And then up top here is gonna be that factory eight millimeter bolt with that washer. 
thread that down by hand. Grab a 17 millimeter socket and ratchet and tighten down that bolt on the inside of your wheel well. This is gonna keep the heat shield secure. Grab an eight millimeter socket and tighten down that top one. Next step is to drop your tubing into place and to ensure that it connects properly to the throttle body. It might be easier to take the adapter out and actually put that around the throttle body. Drop this into place and connect that. Drop that down and face it toward your heat shield. Grab an eight millimeter socket or a flathead and tighten down the clamp around the throttle body. The next step is your filter and the velocity stack. Now this is going to go in first. You wanna make sure that this is oriented closer to the rad. That's gonna go through the opening on the heat shield and connect to the coupler on the end of your tubing. From here, slide that clamp down to the end and tighten it down with your socket. All right, and now you can attach your filter to the other end and tighten that down as well. All right, there's only a few steps left, but the next step is our breather hose. Step one for our breather hose is to completely remove the factory one. Just pull straight back and twist, and that'll detach. Set that aside, it will not be reinstalled. On this end here, you wanna take one of the smaller hose clamps, put that over the edge, and pop that on over the factory fitting. Hose clamp on the other end, twist off the red cap on the welded on fitting on our tubing, and put the hose into place there. Now these are six millimeter clamps, so grab a six millimeter socket or a flathead and tighten them down. Last step of the process before we throw our engine cover back on is to grab your sensor harness, just clip that back in. Once that's taken care of and all your clamps are tightened down, throw the engine cover back on. It might be a good idea to wash off or wipe off the polished tubing just to get some fingerprints off of it get it looking nice and right. So now we're gonna throw the cover back on. Right, once you snap that back in place, you're good to go. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up my review and install for the SR Performance Cold Air Intake. You can get your SR Performance Intake right here at AmericanMuscle.com.